everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. Now, this one I wasn't gonna do, a, well, I've made it, and I wasn't doing a tutorial. I made this for myself. It's something that, you know, I've, I always enjoy making these. I made one for my uncle last year. And yeah, I put it together, I've had it on display, and I've been enjoying it for the last couple of weeks. However, my sister came round and she got a little bit crazy over it. And she said, oh my gosh, I love it. I want one, make me one. So I'm making one. So this was, <laughs> yeah, it's really nice, obviously, when someone sees something that you've made. But I just, I don't know, sometimes I make things, I don't always share everything. And um, yeah, I just put a movie on and I love collecting vintage old decorations. So in here are authentic 19, kind of 1960s into 1970s decorations and then I've got some 80s in there as well and I, I just love them and then there is some other more modern elements that you'll notice so for example the the rosette there's from the Dovecraft collection along with the beautiful Father Christmas there that's a wooden embellishment and those snowflakes they're new. I have done this is from I cut this using the Arteza gold vinyl on my Cricut and I've stuck that on the top. This is just a sheet of acetate. You don't even have to add, have the acetate. You could have it as an open piece. So you could touch all these pieces. Um, we've got a little vintage bear there. These de um, little reindeer or the deer, they're from the Dovecraft uh, decoupage kit. We've got a little mushroom in there. I've got really another old decoration just behind there. I've got the, the ones with the fabric on that I remember as a child and even these bells, these are old as well. And I just love them. And then I don't know how well it's showing up, but this is all lit up as well. So if I just turn, you can just see there and it's very lit up. These are colorful lights as well. Again, it's got that kitsch feel about it, which I adore. It's very much my style with the traditional colors of green, golds, reds, silvers, those kind of things. The paper on the background is from an authentic paper pack from a couple of years ago. It's beautiful and I saved a few of the sheets and I just love that lovely, you know, Santa images that are on this. Nice big bow, skinny tinsel and yeah, very easy to do. So. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Like I said, I wasn't going to share how I've done this one, but now I am, so enjoy the video. Okay, so to make it, I've used the foam board, and the foam board is very light, but it's really strong, so it's great for making 3D kind of projects. It comes in these great big sheets. I got the A1 size, and I got three of them. Three, oh, my focus is gone. There we go, get my ring. Come on. There we go. It's um, three sheets of the A1, and it was three for, well, no, maybe it was four sheets for £10, and I've got lots of it. I made all of the advent calendar. I've used it for the base for my Christmas village or Santa's workshop. It's being used on this, and I have two really awesome projects. They're just being finished for the new year, and I think some of you are going to absolutely love them. So, yeah, they're to come as well. So it's a great, you know... Um, material to have in your craft stash. So it's very straightforward to make. I'm just going to put my hot glue on there. So the base is 12 by 12 and you cut it. You have to make sure you've got a very, very sharp knife. That's the, the main, I say, top tip. You have to have a sharp cutting knife and use a metal ruler and it will cut like butter. So I always find as well, let me just grab this ruler here I love to use because you can grip the top. This is, um, is this the Arteza one? Yeah, this Arteza one. It's architect one. And, but you can obviously push it down and hold up here and then your fingers aren't near the blades. So let me just grab a scrap piece here and I'll just show you, you know, the easiest way. And I always find cutting it standing up as well because that way you've got an even pressure and you're able to do a nice kind of even cut. So I've got my Arteza knives here. I've got all um, extra blades there as well, but I always go for this one. It's nice and sharp. I'm just standing up there and I'm just going to line it up, line my ruler up with that inch mark there and then just push down and you cut and you just get a beautiful cut. So yeah, they're my kind of top tips on using the foam board and, and cutting it. For me to get the sizes and the measurements, all I've done for the 12 by 12 piece is I got a piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper sit it over the top, I then drew around it with a pen and then cut it out. So this is actually the corner of one of those boards and then I've just cut in here. Okay, so you want one piece of 12 by 12 and you can use grey board as well. So if you've got lots of grey board floating around, you know, you can use that. But the good thing about the foam board is you have that almost quarter of an inch 
thickness so you have a lot a nice kind of surface there to be able to stick you know this to another piece so I'll be using hot glue on this so then you want for the sides here because it's all deconstructed I've got two that are three by twelve and the three by twelve ones I've already covered mine in double sided tape so that's why it's got bits hanging over the edges but underneath they are three by twelve that way so they're going to go along the sides like this and they're going to stick on top okay so like so and then inside will be these pieces here which will go like that okay so that's how it's all going to be I'm going to talk you through all this in a moment anyway these two pieces here are again three inches and the length is 11 and 3 8 because they're kind of you know they're sitting inside these two pieces here so you want two of them two of the 12 by 3 one piece of the 12 by 12 now before we stick it all together you actually want to cover it it's easier to do it when all the pieces are separate and I'm also going to cover this back piece as well I think I've, I think I know what pattern paper I'm going to use but I want to do the sides first and then I can kind of see how it's going to look so here I have I'm using the Dovecraft Christmas Tales for this one. It's, I used, did I use it on the side? I don't think I did use it on my one actually because I loved that authentic one and I'd had it for a couple of years so I wanted to get it used. But for my sister I'm going to use these ones. So on the longer sides, or actually on the sides, it's going to be these ones and then for the top parts it's going to be the snowflakes. So with the 12 by 3 pieces, I have covered both sides in double sided tape. I find it works actually really well with this foam board and then you can add glue over to you know the top of it if you want to but I find it easier to decorate the sides doing it this way so I'm just going to take the once I get one going then I can get the rest this one's right on the end there we go just going to take the backing off of these on one side so yeah you want to go along all four of these and literally you can see what I've done I've covered it in um, double-sided tape but if you haven't got double-sided tape you can use a liquid glue but because the foam board is a smooth shiny surface you want something that's really going to stick well and I just think your liquid glues if you stick them directly onto that they may end up peeling off so let's just take that all off there and then, I'm sure I've got the right piece, yep. So this is the exact same width of the paper. So what I'm actually gonna do is just line, grab that one, just put my paper so it is right up to the edge there. And all the way along there. And then stick that down such a cute design absolutely adore these papers and it's quite nice that I will see this when I go over her house each time so over the years you know I'll still remember this paper pad and stuff so I always say to people if you're some people hate cutting into paper or they buy one and keep one and stuff I just buy one well I occasionally buy two and use it and then if there's something you really love that much use it on something that you get to keep that you get to enjoy whether it be a mini album a piece of home decor and that way you know you've always got it there like that cat paper that I love from my um, storage, my 8x8 storage. No, it wasn't my storage. It was, sorry, the die cutting plate storage. That's right next to me now, and I love that paper. But because I made something for myself, I get to see it all the time. So again, just taking the backing off of that one, and then you just want to wrap it all the way around the other side, like so just to make sure it sticks there and then because I went over the edge with the tape you can just push it onto that side and then that last bit that's left will just stick around and that's what I'm then going to stick my hot glue against you're not going to see any of that but it just wraps around so you've got the right measurement there oh I didn't give the measurements of the pattern paper I would have, that, there'd be a little message that would have come up because I wouldn't realise that when I go to edit. But these are 12 by 6.5 each piece. But now you've got a beautiful decorated side. So you can see when that now sticks on here once we've decorated that piece, that's what you're going to see a little bit on the inside and then that's what you're going to see on the outside. I think it's going to look really, really nice. I love it. And I cover all of that. I'm going to cover that side with um, tinsel. So it will all be covered up. So I'm going to grab my other... 12, yeah, 12 by 3 piece and do the same with that one.
Okay, so all my pieces are covered and I've also gone ahead and covered the front and the back of my base, okay, or the back of the shadow box. Now, also, I don't know if I gave the measurements for the paper on this. Again, it's six and a half by the 11 and three eighths, okay? And also, if you're using directional paper on your sides, make sure that, because the, the longer pieces are the, for the side. So these ones are slightly shorter because they go on the top and the bottom. So make sure if you're using directional paper that, you know, it's the right way up, okay? Because they're, like I said, they're going to go in there. So I'm going to start sticking this all together. So I've got my hot glue on. Another little tip when you're gluing large areas, make sure your glue gun is really, really hot. This has been on for about half an hour while I've been preparing all of this stuff. So that glue now will take a little bit more time to actually dry. So by the time I've put, you know, ran the glue all the way along here, and then it, it wouldn't, that top end wouldn't have dried. But if your glue gun's only been on maybe five, 10 minutes, it's gonna set quite quickly there. So it needs to be really hot and really runny. And you shouldn't have too many problems when you're gluing, you know, large areas. So I'm just going to, I'm not, again, it's one of these projects, I'm not worried about any glue oozing out because I'm covering lots of the, or nearly all the sides with beads and skinny tinsel. It hides all of that. And also if you want to add any like artificial snow, the glue will look really good because it gives the snow dimension and if you paint it white it will you know it looks really good so I'm now sticking it on top of the 12 by 12 piece and running it right along the side okay so just really push that down and just hold that in place for a good few seconds for that glue to really set Okay, so that's that one there. And again, don't worry about this. If you want to cover around the sides, then you can do, but I'm putting tinsel all around this, so I didn't see any point. And then again with this one, I'm going to run my glue and just stick that down the same way. Okay, so there's my two sides. Make sure you've got really nice right angles. You can see it's nice and straight there. Then you want to pop these bits in between. They should slot in that you want it to be snug, you don't want it to be loose because then you can just push the sides up. But can you see there how that's all gonna work? So for this one, you need to run your glue. I'm gonna grab another glue stick, one of my longer ones, and you wanna run the glue. It's up to you, you can either run the glue, in fact, I think I might, it might be easier, down the side of here, along, sorry, down the side of here, along the top of here, and then up that side. I think I might do that because you're gonna be pushing that in there. It might be a bit better, so. Okay, so you can see there how that all looks. It's nice and flush with the tops here. Because you need this to all be level because you're gonna put your acetate on top. That's if you decide to. You may just wanna cover it with some tinsel and then just keep this, you know, all open. And it also, you could use this as a nice gift box idea as well. So then I'm gonna do exactly the same with this one here. Okay, so now that is all ready. Next, I'm gonna get my lights and we're gonna pierce a little hole here and we're gonna start threading them all around and I'm gonna put some bead trim inside here and get the bells put in place. And uh, yeah, and go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna stick these beads in first. Um, I've got these here, again, I get these from charity shops. So cheap to get all these bits for decorations, but I mean, there's loads there anyway. But that was a pound and you get 12 meters, so it's gonna last me ages. But I think I'm gonna use the red on the inside, maybe do something with the gold on the outside. And there's the old bells there as well. So I'll cut a few of them off. So really easy to use this. I'm gonna start down in the corner because I'm gonna build up a lot over here. So if you've got any glue and any mess, keep it down to one of the corners because that will all get hidden um, eventually. So I'm just going to, just bit by bit, run a bead of glue. I'll probably go up, just do one just nearly to the top of that one there. And then get the end. And then just sit them, and you, they're just literally just attached to that hot glue really easily. It's a really nice way to decorate, and it just covers up everything. So you can go along up the sides as well. I'm not going to, you're not really going to see any of that once all the lights are on because those um, the lights I'm using are the same lights that I've used for 
obviously the other light box but also the village and um, they're just they work really well I should be able to push that one yeah it goes right up into that corner so I'm just going to work my way along and get these all stuck down okay so that's that piece there then I'm going to do the lights and then I'll do the bells and then it's all the fun decoration. The acetate and the tinsel is done at the very end because you need to be 100% sure that you've finished everything inside before you obviously add that. So these are the lights, these are the rice lights that I buy. Always love these ones, they're perfect for when you're doing any kind of home decor. Five meters for $2.99, maybe $1.99. You know, you get these very inexpensive. The pound shop do good lights as well, but I do find the rice lights to be the nicest for these kind of things because the lights are so thin. So they're only tiny, but they really do show up. It takes three AA batteries, but also the one I used on my advent calendar was for a, it was for like a wine bottle. So it had like a wine stopper on it. But you can see how much you get here, absolutely tons. I need to unravel all of it because I need to get the very end to stick through the back of the shadow box. So there we go. And I would test it before, obviously you go and stick this all down as well, because the last thing you want to happen is you want, you put it all on, you stick it all down, and then you go to put it on and it doesn't. So I'm just gonna pop that there. I've got the end, which I'll just leave sticking out there. And then right up in this top corner is where I just wanna pierce a hole. And because it's the foam board, it's so easy to pierce through. So I'm just using my pokey tool and then I'm just gonna kind of stretch that hole open a little bit and then from the back, I can just feed that through. And because those lights, the little bulbs are so small, that's all you need. You can see now that goes in. So I'm going to pull that all through. You don't have to have it as long as mine. And you could have bigger lights, you know, it's a, it's a shadow box, it can take something bigger. But I did like layering these up. Um, and it's easy to stick down with your hot glue because you've got all the wire. So as long as you keep the glue on the wire, then yeah, they'll be fine. Okay, so if you want this hanging on the wall, then I would suggest that you actually attach this pack on the top here and then have a big bow and something to disguise it there. Mine are to be just kind of stood upright. That was my idea for them. So you can actually then just stick this like on the back there, okay? So I'll show you when I stick mine down, but you'll see where the wire ends and then you've got the plastic. So you just want to kind of get up to that point really and then that can just kind of stick there. In fact, I will put a bit of hot glue there now so that doesn't go through. Actually, I might stick the whole, might as well stick the whole thing down. So I will just kind of have it like that. Make sure you stick the right side because you want to be able to slide the top off so it's actually that way. So I'm just going to run some glue down here and then pop a little bit of hot glue on the back so you can get your switch there perfectly I already checked this so I know it works and then the battery bit that just slides it does work there we go that just slides off okay so just get all that checked out first and then you're good to go Okay, and now with this, I basically just start feeding it around. You can see there, mine all runs along the top and then this, you know, this, the tinsel. So the tinsel's really there to make it look beautiful during the day and then at night, when those lights all come on, it just, it looks lovely and it just illuminates all the baubles and, and just, it's really pretty. So I'm gonna crack on now and do that because it's gonna take me a good kind of 20 minutes to get that all stuck down. Okay, so the lights are all stuck down. Do try and keep them in on the side. I've kind of gone over onto the top, but it will be fine. The acetate will still sit on that and everything gets hidden. So you'll see here, I've got this tinsel and this is what I mean. Once you stick that over the top, it basically covers everything, but you get the lovely kind of glow of the lights coming through. And once the lights are off, your normal lights, these lights really do shine. So you don't see them too much like this. Cause obviously all my, I've got my studio lights on and I've got my main light on. So it's, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not too dark at the minute, but it's coming together really well. So this is where you kind of want to be. And now just, well, this is all fun anyway, but just have fun filling it up. So what I have is I, I bring it out every year, but I have, I can't bring the bag in. It's a massive big plastic like bin bag and it is full of old decorations. So for example, <laughs> 
we have this Mother Christmas with a slightly creepy looking face. However, there's something about him, I don't know what it is, but I'm almost tempted to have him in here. I think my sister's going to like him. Lots of baubles built up around, you can stick baubles up here, kind of cascading down here. I'm kind of thinking he's going to look quite good and he should, yeah, he's not going to poke out the top. I mean, I could you know shear a bit off of his bottom there but you can see he is very very old he's actually got a little bit of weird like over flow of his face there let's just get rid of that because you don't need that on there but there's something a little bit sweet about him maybe his face could do with a little wipe he is very old he looks like he's very like you know late 60s 70s kind of thing but there's something cute about him so he may well go in here we will see then i have good old christmas trees these ones I want to add some snow to. These aren't vintage. I have used vintage ones in other projects. I've got other Christmas decorations over the years. But I'm probably going to have a few trees. <laughs> the proportions are completely wrong now. But that's the fun thing about these kind of projects. You know, just do whatever you want, really. Um, then we have I've got these old baubles here with all the, um, like, the silk kind of. And you kind of rest them in there and glue them and then build up everything around it. There's one more of those. I have this bag of, you know, they're still in their uh, packaging. Made in Taiwan. I mean, that's, you know, they're old. They're probably, I'd say, mid-80s, these ones. Maybe a little bit earlier. But, uh, yeah, I remember putting them on the tree with the little plastic handles. But then you've got the even older ones, which are glass. And these have the metal pieces on them so those ones are even older again but you kind of you want you just have to push everything kind of in around itself I've got little balls and also things things like these so I've got these and I haven't really used them but they're quite nice to just keep in one piece I'm thinking about just putting the whole one just stuck in there just to add a little bit of sparkle so I've got those ones I won't put all in there because they'll be nice for other projects got other ones there I have these old decorations look that's a these well these are made in China but they're the old made in China stickers Do you remember you used to get those kind of ones on the bottom of everything but I don't think I want two Santas well, maybe I do I don't know but let me just bring in my one again just so you can see what you can do with it so I've got the little um baubles I've got them up, up in my drawer and need to get them out I'll bring another mushroom little toadstool down I've got tiny trees there I've got more of those these pom-poms and everything little presents I don't have any more of those the snowflakes the candy cane I have all of that so yeah I don't we need to I might end up swapping and she has this one and I keep this one I don't know we'll play around but it's going to be on high speed I'll you know put most of it in but I will edit it down a bit because things like this sometimes I you know kind of start and then leave and come back to so um yeah i'll be back when everything's done and all we've got to do is stick the acetate and the tinsel on Okay, so as you can see, I didn't uh, put the ugly Father Christmas in there. Um, I just thought when she saw mine, she just was so in awe of it. She just loved that one. And I thought I'll try and replicate that as much as possible. So that's what I've done. And then there is my one there. So, sorry, I keep knocking stuff. I don't think I've done too badly considering there's really not much. I need to put my battery pack on there. There's really not much that... Um, I have doubles of the trees maybe but a lot of the baubles you know they're one of a kind I found her as well at the bottom of the bag I need to get a proper little storage really she's a really old little um I guess she's like a little Mrs Claus kind of thing um and I've got a little vintage bear there that was from a present 
and then I've done all those ones. That one's, these aren't old, the candy cane ones, but I just thought they looked really nice. There's one of those little um, glitter pots. Those are from the pound shop, they're not vintage, but it just all seems to work together. This is actually metal, this is really heavy, this one here. So I've popped that in there. And I've put a little wreath on the side, just as something else. There's a little rosette there. I just painted the bottoms of the trees white as well, just so it made the things in front of them just pop a little bit. And then all along the bottom here are tiny little kind of like styrofoam balls. You've got little pom-pom glittery ones there. Little, you know, the baubles. All sorts, I've got another little mini tree there and there. So it's just loads going on. So I'm happy now that I've got everything I want. If you aren't putting acetate over the top, then you're gonna just wanna go and put your tinsel around here now and maybe have your big sentiment there. But I'm gonna use my vinyl and I'm gonna stick that onto the acetate. So next, that brings me onto it nicely. So this is the acetate I use. So it's the Ducrafts Paper Mania Clear Acetate and it's a 12 by 12 sheet. So I just take one out and that's gonna stick straight on the top. I'm just gonna lie that over the top. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to trim a little bit off. I maybe I've gone in, I don't know why actually, because the base is 12 by 12. Maybe it's just slightly under. Every company that you find sometimes there's slight um, differences because the top and bottom is fine. It's just this side here, it's just overhanging. So I'm gonna stick it down first and then trim it. Um, or maybe it might be best to trim now. Let me just quickly do it now. Then I'm gonna do my glue and I'm just gonna do one, one side at a time because you can lift the acetate up. So I'm just gonna run bead of glue on the top of that one. Now this isn't heat resist acetate, however it did seem to work okay. I'm just gonna let that initially cool so it's not piping, piping hot. And then I can just lay that over the top, like so. Again, don't worry too much about how it really looks because everything gets hidden. I might put a bead trim around this as well on the tops, okay. Like so, and then I'm just going to turn it around. You can also put a lot of like um, snow inside this. You could have it, or lots of loose um, baubles, you know, so they all move around. So there's lots of ways to, you know, make these. So, you know, this is just the style that I like to do. And then again, I'm just going to run the glue under this side. I need another glue stick. And just do the same on the other two open sides. Just lift that acetate up slightly and it's enough to get your glue in. This is where I've put the lights a little bit far around but it will still go over. Okay, so there it is all done. It's all encased now in that acetate and it's just, it looks so nice. It starts to feel like a really nice piece now. I'm looking forward to giving this to my sister. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got this, um, it's a real kind of, kind of quite, quite a thick tinsel, skinny tinsel. Now I actually, if you, sometimes you'll see, if you go into like the pound shop or any of kind of like your discount stores, there'll be very cheap decorations and some of them are actually not very nice. Others are really, really lovely. Some of the ones that aren't so nice and they may be 99p or 199, this was actually the shape of a big kind of bell and it was on like a piece of plastic and somebody obviously in the factory went along and kind of wrapped it all around. But when you unwrap it, you have this. So I've got literally loads of this. I've used it on other projects as well for 99p and it's wired and it's thick. So look at some of the decorations in the shops and yeah, you yeah. I mean, look at how they're put together and you might be able to take a lot of it apart. Cause I'm always looking at ways to, I go through a lot of skinny tinsel every Christmas and it can be quite expensive and you don't always get a lot. Well, this is the best value I've found by buying it from something, you know, else. So yeah, just a, just an idea. So I'm gonna start this up here because I'm gonna be adding a bow. I've got a nice big red bow here. So that is gonna stick on the top and obviously my message will be stuck on the acetate at the very end. So I'm gonna just, exactly the same way as I've been doing everything else, I'm gonna just do bit by bit and run my hot glue along there. Oh, and then just lay that down. And it just hides so much. But like I said, that the light just starts to just poke through and it just looks really, really nice. I mean, those lights have gone a little bit higher than I would have wanted. All of these are more on the side. So you just wanna make sure you run your lights within the, the inside there. But that's that one. So I'm now going to go around all of the sides here. I'm going to cover all up here, all around the back here, 
and wherever else I see that white, unless you've covered it with paper, then you'll be doing it differently, and then I'll be back. Okay, so everything is now done. I'm just stood up because I've just cut my sentiment here on the Cricut machine and then I've just put some transfer sheet over the top and now I can just hover this and I'm looking right through my monitor to make sure that I get this as kind of centred as possible. I think that looks about right so I'm going to just dip it down in the centre just and let it kind of roll out. And then I can just put a bit of pressure on here. There's a few little bits that I've got underneath, but they will come off when I lift the transfer sheet. They're not actually on the vinyl. But if this was a hard, like a real tough surface now, I'd go over this with my little kind of spatula, but I'm just gonna apply a bit of pressure just to make sure that those are stuck. And then, and this doesn't leave like a sticky residue, this transfer sheet when you peel it. And you wanna have a nice low, kind of pull so don't lift it up high keep it very low with the surface and you'll see there it's just starting to nicely come away I've used this transfer sheet so many times so you can reuse them there's a backing so I'll just pop it up back on there I've got a pack of it but um, I want to get some bigger ones for some other projects but it just makes it so much easier to line everything up so those bits are all lifting as well with it, which is good. There we go. I love this. So I'm just going to stick that onto its release paper there. And then I can just pop that back with the rest. So there you have it. I've gone for the red with this, I just think it pops a little bit more. Um, I've put the tinsel all along the sides there. Everything is now nicely kind of covered. It's all nice and neat on the back. Easy to turn on and off. I just need to tidy up the ends of the ribbon there that's a bit frayed, so I'll just um, I'll put a lighter to that. But I love it, I think it's really, really fun. I'm so pleased that I know she's gonna like this because I know that she um, wants one. And yeah, I think she's gonna enjoy it. And it'd be nice to know that she's gonna keep this for you know, many years to come as well as me keeping mine. So yeah, I'll definitely be making some more. I have made smaller ones. I've made different kind of, I kind of add them to like more like objects as well. Like, um, what have I done? Like a, I need to pull out some of them actually and um, I can put some pictures up. So yeah, I just, I kind of use random things and just add things to them. So anyway, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing, but there it is. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me just bring in my one again. Let's take the batteries out of that one for this one. So I'll have to get some more because they, like I said, they take three, but there's the one with the gold. And I just love them. I'm going to do tinsel all around this, um, outside of this one as well, because I do like that. So yeah, you can see very, very similar little set up there with the cluster of trees and then all of the the balls and stuff and I just think they're great so I hope it's inspired you it's something that really does make nice gifts so you might not get around to doing it maybe this year but certainly something that you can do throughout next year because it doesn't have to just be for Christmas these could be lovely seasonal pieces so you could do one that's got all your spring kind of colours and flowers and bits and pieces an Easter one would look amazing an Easter bunny and all that kind of stuff I've got a few vintage Easter bits not as much as I'd like so it might be something I'll revisit and you might see that in an Easter tutorial so we'll see but Anyway, thank you for stopping by. As always, I hope you've got some inspiration from today's video and I'll be back again soon with another one. See you soon. Bye.